Welcome back to the watch and check out this new set that we have. This is back. exciting. This is you can actually hear me now. <laughs> Depending how close you are, because I don't know if it's like this or like that. Well, we, we're try. Uh, we all have individual mics. Yes, we do. Indeed. Nice sound You're welcome, audience. <laughs> <laughs> how are you there, Marcus? Yeah, I'm all right. Just yep. Getting used to it. <laughs> Yeah, I know, but but we wanted this because Night's Watch has always been kind of like a discussion thing. Uh, we want to continue that, and we want to try and get the quality as good for you as possible, which is why we have this. And this is like a really fun panel now. Uh, it reminds me of the nerd crew from um, Red Letter Media. Ah, Red Letter Media. Do you remember that? Very, very, cool. Cool. very, cool. very, very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Even though they were making a parody of shows <laughs> like this but you can't blame that their set what they but their set was cool but that's not what we're talking about guys have you heard of strange worlds no no i have but then i forgot about it i kind of forgot about it too so it's a new disney pixar or disney animation film and it has bombed bombed quite significantly it to the tune of like it's gonna lose a hundred million dollars oh wow yeah, that's th- a Pixar film. Oh, that would have been unheard of well, back in the it's day. It's Disney, so it's it's no but Disney just, trying to copy Pixar. But specifically, if it's got like the if it's done by Pixar, that would never happen back in the day. Mm. It just goes to show Disney's wow. <laughs> or it's shocking because I think if I read it right, they've only made about nine million globally. Like it ex- was, what? Wasn't it nine million just within the U.S.? No, no. So within the U.S., they made a like I don't know how much, but I know. Aside from the US, it was like 9 million worldwide, which is... <laughs> oh, is that in addition to the US? Yeah. Okay, yeah, here we go. I, I heard something along the similar lines. That's that's really bad. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's so bad. You get what you deserve. There's reasons why people have not been interested in this movie, which we're going to get into. Uh, and uh, one of the... I, I want to just jump on what Marcus said before, is that this is kind of unheard of. Back in the day, everyone was like the next Pixar movie, you know? For instance, my, th- my point of reference for this is um, is it Inside Out? Mm, yeah. With, was... with the emotions. On the- that was such a weird concept. Like Nothing about that concept made me think, I need to watch that. That looks funny and quirky. But I, it was Pixar. Pixar mm. usually made good films. I was trusting it. And it was a good film. But uh, then things have just been going downhill. Uh, did any of you try and watch Encarto? No. Yeah, yeah. I watched Encanto. <laughs> just just oh. out of my own curiosity, what are each of your favorite Pixar movies? Wally. I really like Monsters Wally. Monsters Inc. I think for oh, me. Oh, that's a good one. Good Monsters choice. Inc. is yeah. Very good choice. Toy Story. I watched a lot growing up, but now going back at all my favorites, I think Monsters Inc. is the one that I will. I'm, I need a list of them. <laughs> is that so, specifically the Pixar ones? Yeah. Or, well, mm. Just any sort of, I would say, animation that came from like the Disney sort of. I do want to. Oh, like, okay. I do want to give like a mention of Up. That was a good one too. That was a welcome surprise when that mm. came out. I was like, "This is going to be dumb," and that no. First, like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Emotionally what? riveting filmmaking <laughs> of scene." <laughs> I need a list. I'm sure there's one that's resonated with me more than the others, but I I can't remember it more. Incredibles was another one. In that's Incredibles. Yeah. Easily probably my favorite because superheroes. Mm. And uh, Incredibles two was a disappointment. Uh, kind of starting a trend there, but. Incredibles, I really enjoyed. Mm. Well, they're all good choices. I was mm-hmm. just curious. There's no wrong answer. What anyway. was your one? I forget what you said. For me, it would have been Meet the Robinsons. I don't know if you... Any Actually, you yeah. Seen That's a great one. I like that one a lot. Interestingly, how many good Pixar or Disney Pixar films there were. And then it just started going to... Right, we're repping them in now. We've got to rip in like, like um, Shrek and How to Train Your Dragon. What? You've got to rip in all those other ones too. Because I think Meet the Robinsons... They're Robinson's, not Pixar. They're not Pixar. Is Meet the Robinsons Pixar? Yeah, that one is. Is yes. it? That one is. Okay. I think, I Shrek think is closer though. Shrek is not. I know Shrek isn't. I think Meet the Robinsons was Disney Pixar. Um, and How to Train Your Dragon, by the way, was brilliant. But it's not Pixar. That's mm. DreamWorks. And that... Yeah. And, that's one of my favorite. I'd say How to Train Dragon is better than um, uh, I- even Incredibles. Really love How to Train Dragon. Spicy that's, take that there. Is bold, that is a bold yeah, take. It's, it's, oh, it's the cool. humor it's is so good in how and it, and it's it's, it's humor that you, like it's smart humor. Okay, yeah. it's really good. And then there's such great emotional payoff. There's great action. They also I, I'm not saying you're wrong. Dragons. Just, that's a surprising opinion to have on that. To be honest, really is this is that surprising? No, I, I mean it's dragons, so yeah. It's, Makes sense. Does they're make like sense. Shad. They're like cute, cuddly dragons. They're not like 
dragons. Oh, I don't know. There's a couple <laughs> in there that are kind of. Uh, Did you see the last dragon? Well, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, like in general. <laughs> in general, know. okay. I get you. I get you. Uh, so Pixar started to go downhill, and is that like a trend for animation generally, uh, mm. like uh, in terms of DreamWorks as well? I think DreamWorks has always been hit and miss, mm -hmm. but I think once they lost John Lasseter and Pixar, once he got kicked out and they got all the new people coming in making whatever they want, mm. that's when it went downhill. And I think Disney as well, they've always been hit or miss. They've had, you know, the, the golden age with Hercules and uh, Aladdin, you know, like the old mm -hmm. OG cartoon yep. stuff, but then they've also missed a lot as well. Well, for me, um, uh, Encarto had no great marketing. It just appeared on Disney+, Plus, so mm. like, not a big release. And so I was thinking... I, I had trouble telling the difference between, you know how Disney would make crappy ones, like the crappy sequels to yeah, um, yeah. Uh, like Atlantis and stuff, where it was oh. just, the, the quality was night and day. It was just absolute crap compared to, the, you know, the original that they made. And, I, and I, it started to happen where I couldn't tell if this was supposed to be one of Disney's just spew out animations that they just throw for content versus their primary releases. And because Encarto had no big budget and no fanfare, I was like, is, is this supposed to be like one of their serious films? And it turns out it, it kind of was in terms of uh, how much effort they put into it, mm. but it was a really average to bad film. Yeah. What was your take on that, Nathan? Uh, I agree. I watched it and was like, oh, I felt really like it. It had somewhat of a build up. But the payoff for me was just, yeah. It was, and I know it's popular with families just because of the songs. The songs weren't that great either. They're not, we're not talking about Frozen songs. You, yeah. The Bruno thing was just friggin' annoying. Wait, I'm sorry, Did you do you mean that the Frozen songs were good? I actually feel yes. <laughs> oh. The Frozen songs are good. You can't, I... I let it go, man. You can't. Oh. <laughs> yes, I would like to let that yeah, yeah, yeah. From let my the name. song go. <laughs> yes. But it, it, that's the thing. It's catchy. Yeah. Well, that, mean, but so is Don't Talk About Bruno. It's, such, it's dumb, though. It has a bad tune. I have no commentary on any of this. Yeah. <laughs> I think of this, you know. But I, I can't judge those shows based on what families enjoy because you look at what families enjoy sometimes and the kids will just and pick up whatever's popular. Kids, um, my kids enjoyed Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Yeah. So, yeah. so like, yeah. kids will enjoy a lot of, a lot of crap. So, I feel yeah. we should also mention that Apple, the biggest company in the world, has gotten serious into the animation game with their new movie, Luck, mm. which um, didn't it have some of the exact... Exe they, they hired John Lasseter to make that movie. Oh, I haven't yes. seen it yet. So I, that, I so have not even heard of this. Yeah, <laughs> what are we I, talking I, I about? under the radar, that one. The animation is on par with Disney stuff. Okay, so interesting. Apple may be in the future a serious contender in this sort of uh, uh, arena. All right. I don't know because they've been trying with games for but, a while. But you got to remember, they, they just have at it. so much money. So they do. So did Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Touche. Well, Amazon keeps going, don't they? And they look. This is the thing. Amazon has had some good things. I got to admit, I liked um, uh, Invincible. And very uh, good. Yes, very good. Invincible is great. Uh, what was the other one? Um, of course, there's like. Uh, the list, the something list, the, terminal list, terminal list, I terminal list, say blacklist, and no. Re Reacher also good. Um, so Amazon's, and then they just have dumpster fires. So interesting discussion, and so with um, uh, Encarto being so average to bad in my opinion, mm. then I can't remember what the next one because there's so much just forgettable crap. That the last have. one I remember being a big deal was Lightyear. Lightyear, Lightyear, bombs. yeah, yeah. But that was also see, I separate Pixar and Disney stuff. But Disney owns Pixar now. Yeah. yeah, but they are made by different people in a sense. So, like, you have Encanto, Frozen, um, Ride the Last Dragon, that's all Disney. And then you got Turning Red. Um, <laughs> oh, Turning Red Lightyear, has another one. What? Uh, <laughs> Soul, those never are all Pixar. You guys ever heard of Turning Red? <laughs> no, I have not. Um, is it ER? Watch ER's video on Turning Red. It's hilarious. <laughs> Where the metaphors in that thing, quite, it's basically a metaphor of a, a kid going through puberty, <laughs> essentially oh. a young girl going through puberty. And instead of, you know, having issues with emotion, she turns into a r giant red panda, a very hairy giant oh, red panda. Oh, I saw the trailer. I think I saw the trailer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There was ads and stuff for that. Yep, mm, yep. Um, can't say I'm being convinced to watch it. <laughs> they raise money by selling photos of herself. Seriously? 
Yeah, to go to um this boy band and mm, <laughs> it's like. I wouldn't put it that way. Now it's messed up, but yeah. I wasn't thinking that when I was but watching. They literally it. do. Like, like he's, yeah, she... but it's a giant red panda. It's like a mascot. Anyways, I think we should get on topic with our uh, uh, strange worlds. Is that it what it's is? Called? But this is all the preamble because, dude, like the. Uh, didn't care about um, uh, Red Panda movie. And Lightyear is interesting because Lightyear is where they started to promote the film based on certain ideological tick boxes, saying mm. it's good because of the tick boxes uh, and not because of the film. And I've, the film I heard was just garbage anyway, um, really boring, not exciting or anything like that. Uh, but it bombed massively. And uh, <laughs> the. Chris Evans, I was saying that because parents didn't want to take, uh, well, some parents, and I understand, but we have dedicated videos on the Lightyear controversy because it had a gay kiss in it. Okay. And I do feel that is inappropriate for children's media. The children will learn about those things when their parents choose to introduce them and let them know about that type of stuff. Not when Disney wants it. Or and Dis was censored in Muslim countries. Yeah. And we should also mention that this movie was also censored in Yeah. <sighs> so yes, because you get thrown off a rooftop. <laughs> yeah. This is where, because... With uh, Strange Worlds, it's like they didn't learn the message from Lightyear, and so they doubled, quadrupled down. And, uh, all right, and then this one, I need to bring up a tweet. So, Brianna Wu, that sounds familiar. Oh, my oh God. not this person. Where does Brianna Wu come from, guys? Gentlemen. I don't know, guys. Can you tell me? Tyrant. I don't know. No. <laughs> Isn't she the writer from She-Hulk? No, no, uh, no, 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 she's no. Game oh, of Gate stuff. Gamergate, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. she's one of the old school. Even worse. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so she's a dedicated warrior of the uh, justice social kind. Um, Communist society. Yeah. <laughs> so she says, if you though, I think she means if you thought. Um, no. conservatives That's when you know it's going to go viral whenever there's a spelling mistake. <laughs> uh, conservatives freaked out over life here. They're going to... S, star, star, star. So, crap. <laughs> Thank you, Tyrant. Um, the bed over strange worlds, which is great. It's like, it's funny how her gauge on what is great, right? The way she contextualizes what is great follows on. Main protagonist is gay. Older people don't find it remark remarkable. What? what? Okay. Um... Biracial marriage. Um, like, what? Like, I'm confused. When have I seen like conservatives <laughs> complain about biracial marriage? Yeah, what's the what the hell is that? Cut? What? It's not the 1960s anymore. I, oh. And I understand the gay thing because I understand where conservatives are coming from in that thing. But it's like, she honestly thinks conservatives have an issue with biracial like, marriage. America's a different place. Maybe. Uh, look. You come across the most rare case, and it's rare. Like, this is not representative of, of uh, um, conservatives. And most conservatives, if they come across people objected to biracial marriage, they're like, what the hell are you on? Bloody racist. Um, almost no one is white. That's, that's uh, racist. That is racist. <laughs> she is saying, unironically, it's a positive in the film that a certain group of people aren't in it because of the color of their skin. Okay. Climate change metaphor. Oh. Even the dog is disabled. <laughs> yeah, so, we have disabled dog representation. Yippee. Let's throw a party. There's just so much to unpack in that. There time. really <laughs> is. <laughs> Maybe Elon what should make tweets say? even shorter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that last line, I, I read ahead of that and oh my. Even the dog's disabled? You're celebrating that poor dog? Who has <laughs> disability is a weird one in the in, in the, with the woke movement because once upon a time disability was something to try and overcome and mm. and have it not debilitate your life to the greatest degree possible and we've uh, advanced medical technology to try and help out this I mean my my brother he has a very severe um, uh, hearing um, disability okay he's not completely deaf but. To the point where he could only hear vowels, all right? And then hearing aids really helped it out. And since that, he's got 
two cochlear implants, which is amazing. I, like I remember he was talking about when he got these cochlear implants that <laughs> for the first time he could hear things that he never heard before. He was in the workshop and he heard someone whistling and he looked and was like, you, you know, like, and th- like, so this type of stuff, it's an uplifting thing when mm. we can help people with disabilities overcome their disabilities. But now, I don't know, they're left to try and saying your disabilities are something to not try and overcome and then wear on your sleeve and be proud of and and stuff. And it's like, I think if you ask people, most disabled people, if they had the choice to suddenly not have to be burdened by their disability, you know which one they would pick. Far from being proud of, it's something that I would like to overcome. The, and so it's like, oh! And look, let's try and strongman this. They want disabled representation. Ooh. Tis but a scratch. Arms <laughs> <laughs> and legs come out. Power through it. The, exactly, there's that. And we, that, that is an example of disabled representation. <laughs> or, or someone who became disabled and was not phased by it. Uh, but, all right, they're, they're really trying to say, you know, uh, there's a lot of film roles that are not available to disabled people. <laughs> it's an uh, animated film, though. And it's a dog! <laughs> and also, obviously... Okay. Um, Sorry, just thinking about if they wanted disabled dog representation. Make sure you're talking to the mic. If they wanted disabled dog representation, they just cut off the legs. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine these people doing something that old. Hopefully not. Well, I'm curious what even the thought process was. Like, it would have changed nothing if it was just a normal dog or a no, disabled it wouldn't. dog. Like, I, I want to know your whole thought process where just you honestly think that. A disabled person, when they see a disabled dog, is like, oh, I see myself. I feel so represented. It's like, what are you trying to say there? I mean, maybe. <laughs> I, I also find funny in this tweet that there's nothing about the story, nothing about mm-hmm. the world. It's all just political crap. There, there's nothing about, like, it was emotional. I, I love the characters. Like, you think of the older anime. Like, even the fact that it's like, you know, this is an amazing step forward for the, the genre or the platform or how movies are made. No, it's all about representation. Yeah. And remember, she said it is great. And the way she contextualizes it's great is by this tick box list. And it makes other people mad. It's not that you're happy about it. Yeah, it's that you're it's, finding joy in other person's suffering. It's so funny. That's, that's, that's sadistic. Actually, like, this is the same mentality as the writers of She-Hulk. Like, they felt it was a better show because it was making the fans of the character, the core fans, mad because you were screwing them over and wrecking the character and you liked it. She was happy with it. She said she gets sadistic pleasure out of, you know, trolling the trolls, she tried to say. That's the exact same thing, where like making something worse for the sake of just pissing off the people who you should be trying to sell this movie to makes it good. That's how insane and narcissistic these people are. Well, the writers just hate canon. Watch that video. Yeah, we got, yes. we got it Watch it. Oh my goodness. And yeah, nothing about the plot anywhere there. Well, this is the plot. Yeah, it seems like it. And if I see like a thing like that, well, I did see stuff like that, and I have no interest in film because I don't know if anything is good in the film at all. But then the counter argument is you are not their target audience. Well done. Keep doing it. Because <laughs> you are absolutely right. And the proof of this is the box office results. You, yeah. Don't you complain are, to us when your results suck because you're the ones that said, it's not made for you. Okay, we're not going to watch it. Yeah. I mean, like, this person believes conservatives will hate it for wrong reasons, uh, except maybe one. I think the, uh, the the gay kiss kind of thing. Conservatives do have an issue about that because there is a normal biological sexual relationship that you don't need to teach kids. They know it by default. And even then, by the way, actually, I'm when I say teach kids, kids shouldn't even be taught about sex at an early age, okay? They're, they're not sexual creatures. And so... Like even overly passionate kissing, I am. I have an issue with in children's media, absolutely. Uh, and but if it we're talking about the light type of, you know, peck on the cheek or something like that, kids understand the normal biological relationship in in humanity, men and women. Okay, it's pretty obvious. It's not out of the ordinary. Okay, that's the normal. That's the standard. And so what what the left is trying to do, they're trying to rewrite what is normal to make it far more, I guess, popular. Now when I say popular, because that's the thing, they don't. It, having tolerance is not enough for the left. You need to celebrate it and promote it as the better option. 
as actually more celebratory than the standard relationship between men and women have had for you know thousands of years. And if you don't, you're a homophobe. And that's where it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa hang on, We're, we've got we've stepped over a pretty you know significant line then, because. Uh, Kids, they nat- kids are very impressionable. The left knows this, and they they naturally want to do things that sometimes will give them attention, sometimes will get them a validation, emotional validation, and and praise and other things like that. And suddenly, if you're saying a certain type of relationship is be getting praised far more than another, what is that going to encourage kids to gravitate towards as they grow up? And the left knows this, which is why they're trying to normalize it as much as possible, and it's why conservatives point that out rightly as grooming because uh, kids shouldn't be taught about this stuff at a young age okay even like normal um biological sexual relationships no okay and i'm not saying i'm against gay characters in media i never complained about gandalf i'm against over sex Dumbledore. 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 oh really the actor of gandalf was gay okay you, you just give me some credit <laughs> shut up Tyrant. <laughs> He's been quiet for a while. I know, so but I can I can see his face. It's just I haven't seen it, so I can't <laughs> comment on how gay stuff is. Like if it's just it's like sad. if it's like um Rise of Skywalker, how I think it was like in the background or something. Oh like yeah, that. The, oh the two uh, girls. Don't, don't give a shit. If it's like that, I don't yeah, care. Yeah. Mm. It's just I know that this chick it might be something small because mm. she's a raging se- show, uh social justice warrior. So mm. she might be something in the background. She's going, Oh, it's gay, it's all this and it's mm. like might not be at all. I'm actually glad you brought that up. Because I, I don't know. I just well, there's, know. well, there's the thing, though. Even if it is a something as what people believe inconsequential as a kiss in the background. Right? I understand what you're saying. No, no. Like, it shouldn't be taught, period. Kids, kids like, notice it. My, any sort of sexual stuff. And I agree with that. Yeah, my daughter picked up on stuff like that instantly with questions that I want to choose when I introduce this to yeah, her. Yeah, not I, have to explain it in the middle of a cinema where she literally... I could, so what happened is it was in Thor, Love and Thunder yeah, yeah. where Valkyrie starts talking about... Um, uh, I don't know, there was this really long kind of gaze that Valkyrie has between these two girls um, when she's running away from the Zeus place. <clears throat> and then she starts talking about girlfriends or whatever. And my daughter's like, huh? And she, she picks up on it instantly. And that was subtle compared to what they have, say, in Strange Worlds, right? And I'm in the middle of a flipping cinema, right? I, this is not the time and place that I want to have these conversations with mm. my daughter. And that's the type of thing that Disney is wanting to force and take away the control away from parents. And that's why freaking like conservatives have a big issue with it, all right? And uh, Disney, they're doing it on purpose. They have... What was that lady who was working for Disney that said black and white in the Zoom interview that Disney is perfectly fine with her pushing her not-so-subtle gay agenda, all right? It's black and white that they're doing this on purpose, trying to take away the control away from parents. And that's why parents have a big issue with it. That's why my kids won't be watching Strange New Worlds. Also, that is just crap by all reports. Okay. And I don't like, if you think, if you think I'm like, oh, it's not, no, no, just crap film. I don't want my kids to watch the new Star Wars um, Rise of Skywalker last year because that's crap. I want to watch all good stuff um, that's well written. Thank you for reminding me those films exist. <laughs> you are welcome, sir. Uh, so. Uh, Yes, conservatives do have an issue with that part, right? And when they see that, yeah, they're going to make a choice. It's like, look, and then Disney's reaping the rewards of it. Okay, this is supposed to be a family film. Well, families aren't Disney. This is what you get. But people like this person here, they're celebrating it. It's like, keep celebrating because you're just cheering and promoting and pushing Disney to go bankrupt. And that's what's happening as a result. Well, I was reading an article on this, right? And you know a funny thing that they, they said? That they were blaming Bob Chapek for this. <laughs> <laughs> they were saying, it, yeah, because of the pandemic, he, he was like conditioned families to watch things at home streaming. And that's why no one's come out to see this movie. Top Gun Maverick. Well, I mean, they can just make the money back by releasing things weekly, right? I mean, that's a great business strategy. Seriously, that, but it is a great position. Seriously, strategy. I'm glad you said now? that. Thank you, yeah. thank you for now. that. Now. Yeah, <laughs> but crap is crap, even if you release it in a more you know um, viable business model. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so uh, even if it's crap, things like look at Rings of Power that was released weekly. And yeah, it was yeah. yeah, if it was a binge model, trust me, you don't want to do that. You don't want to binge that show. <laughs> <laughs> right, Actually, um, so. Uh, we might have to have a full discussion because I already have things that I want to talk about on that one. So stay tuned for perhaps a uh, binge versus weekly release discussion on that. Going back to Strange New World. So uh, that's, they genuinely think, you know, the tick boxes are enough to make it successful. And that just turns off most 
conservative uh, families that want control over you know what their children see and stuff uh, from the get-go. And it's so funny because I know very little about the film story-wise. All the things that come up in my news feed or uh, everything has not mentioned the story because it doesn't I think matter it's to be a Disney. boring story. Like, I also think it's it's lazy creativeness they've tried to be like oh it's a strange world with interesting characters you're just jumbling up this mess to make this web that looks different and unique but not at all mm. interesting mm-hmm. we think of monsters inc right yeah it was monsters under the bed but they like changed it into this different world and they had this whole economy of screams and like it was very well thought out and interesting to see where with this movie it's like all right they're just sci-fi generic boring sludge fest so but that's nathan just, gay what? gay people are in it <laughs> And I don't care. It has a disabled dog, Nathan. I don't care. There's a climate Nathan, change Nathan, metaphor. Nathan, there's an interracial couple, Nathan. How can you not like it? Yeah, how, is, not, all, I, how is this all That one confuses me the most. Like, are we still talking? All right, all right, they, all right, all right, that up all right, all right, okay, okay. If we haven't, if we haven't convinced you about this, what about, just, just hear me out, what about climate change narrative? Oh. That mm, no, <laughs> I think out of everything, that's the one that frustrates Why are you me the most. Your mic? You were screaming. I am just... screaming. I uh, we're, we're trying to make it the, the, the ultras, and you know that's what we're doing. Like... <laughs> eating, eating the mic. Um, so y- your mic should be fine. It's it's fine. I'll protect it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think the thing that annoys me the most with this one is the climate change stuff in it, because it makes sense for everything else. But the, the stuff that pushes me with climate change is frustrating me. I don't know if I can say that really on video. Is that too spicy of a take? I don't I know. I want to hear so, more, Nathan. So, Nathan. Tell me more about your views on climate change. What is worth? What is worse, Nathan? Climate change or inflation? <laughs> oh! <laughs> well, inflation's more current right now, but climate change I'm more concerned for. A- as in what governments will do oh, in terms of restricting things. Like, it, it's one thing that, oh, I, I go pay more for my bread or whatever. You know what? I'm I can, sorry, viewers, for setting him up. I, I can put this. seeds in the ground and make my own yeast and make my own bread. Climate change, they're going to put restrictions on us that I, I'm not looking forward to. Or there's it, new information coming out about climate change, even now, that is uh, challenging certain narratives. Mm. And uh, I kind of look at climate change like, um, say, the... Um, um, I guess the research that was done on smoking. Okay, originally smoking was good for you. Mm. Okay, oh, yes. research was done, came out. There was counter, there was arguments and everything. But eventually, all the experts in the field acknowledged that all right, this research is, we, we can't deny. That, like smoking is horrible for you. It's really, really bad. But okay? it's very good. <laughs> it is very nice. Like, you, en- you enjoy I, it, dude? Yeah, I do. Like yeah. I know it's bad for me. That's why mm-hmm. I quit a couple of years ago. But like. I like it. I'm not I'm not arguing that. And so the thing about the climate change stuff, if the science was so definitively obvious as many activists claim, there would be no like legitimate climatologists mm-hmm. who would deny it. Okay? How dare you? I, I, well, this is the thing. <laughs> I like I've talked to wow, well, we're getting in the weeds here, but hey, we brought, we brought, <laughs> we brought it, up. it up. We go places. They brought it up though. We, That's the thing. Yeah, I know, they brought they, it up. Climate yeah. change narrative right here. We go places. Um uh, I've spoken with climatologists, right? And they bring up legitimate uh, elements and points of research that contradict the supposed claims. And if it was so cut and dry, you would not find experts in the fields. And I'm not talking about so-called scientists who have uh, expertise in a completely different field than spout off their opinions on stuff that they have no practice or experience in. Neil deGrasse Tyson, right? Um, as if they're experts. I'm no, no, no. Okay, where they say, oh, so many scientists agree about it. It's like, oh, yeah, how many of those scientists are climatologists are actually, you know, experts in the field? And when you find so many experts in the field still showing that there are massive, like, other views of interpretation mm. of data and stuff like that, I am wholly against the whole getting on board with, ah, the climate change narrative because there's a lot of research that is actually not being published. It is being suppressed because there is so much money around it because it's a, it's, it's a great... It is a it is a great uh, tool to get funding to get government to uh, do certain things. Oh, and for the government to mm-hmm. institute certain policies and get ta- like for now, if you give the government any excuse to find a, w- a way to get more money, tax, yeah, stuff carbon tax. Oh, or to do. Country. I mean, yeah, yeah. cigarettes to- is a good a, a good uh, example of this. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to make it illegal, so they just taxed it to cr- ridiculous amounts, like. <laughs> And the, what's funny is that what they taxed it to is the the most 
the people who are most likely to smoke are probably the poor. Yeah, the poor. So mm. they can't. They just price them out of it. Yeah. There's yep. also another little sinister thing with climate change. Notice how all the solutions are like, "Daddy, government, come save us." Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. The ones with activists, right? They will vandalize paintings they'll spray buckets of stuff and whatever they won't plant trees they won't <laughs> no get their houses off the grid because they live in the hey, cities yeah, anyways so, like so, they, too so, hard. so you're telling like, me they're not activists. established titles they're not established <laughs> titles but activists right they don't even do anything and then, actively and then they still contribute and take part in all the uh you know, CO2, th- th- yeah, they'll, yeah. they'll fly private jets, they'll... Oh, uh, like the celebrities yeah. and stuff. Yep. Yeah, that's just all... And uh, No, nah, uh, but you need to give up your car. And, and you, you know, will own nothing <laughs> and you will be happy about oh. it. Like, oh. the, amount, books. the amount of chemicals and emissions it takes to make an electric car... <laughs> It's the irony in that. Oh, yeah, it's yeah so and uh, funny. <laughs> don't look at where they're made. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's don't like, look at the Red Rivers <laughs> to try... Anyway, I, mm. So... Getting back on topic. Yes. Mm-hmm. Climate change. No, uh, <laughs> strange roles. It's just like, it has a climate change metaphor, guys. Isn't that great? And it's just so funny that people get so convinced by these uh, ideologies, right? That if it just supports what my opinions are, it's phenomenal. It's great. It's wonderful. And that gives writers an excuse to be lazy and they end up just making crap. Mm which we see time and time again. And no, I'm not going to watch Stranger Worlds because it looks crap because it's got all the warning signs. What warning signs? We have a video on how do we know it's going to be bad. Go check well, out that video. Well, I watched it because I'm a good reviewer. So. Well, you've watched Strange Worlds? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was say. It's like... <laughs> I just don't think as a review channel we should be saying, well, I'm not going to watch it. I'm going to review it. And we're not reviewing it, but we're reviewing the um, discussion around it. And I think the fact that they haven't made that much back from any of the box office stuff is signal enough that no one's going to care mm. to watch reviews anyways because no one wants to watch it. Yeah. There we go. Uh, Please watch this video. Watch the video. <laughs> you can watch this video. Uh, Strange Worlds, have you watched it? What do you think? Uh, what have you heard about it? Let us know in the comments below. And as always... Stay on watch. You took it from me, but yes, do that. 